What's up, guys? Jason, Flow Packs. Uh, just going to make a quick video for you guys real quick. I got a couple people asking, and I've had a couple people in some groups talking about how uh, how they put their cat packs on. Um, so, this is pretty much that. Uh, I just picked up a new car today, guys. I'm digging it, man. This car is so light. Literally. So light. It's a Mugen MTX. Or, I'm sorry, MTC1. It's a clean little 10 scale touring car. I ended up buying the, uh, the aluminum chassis for it because I wanted to try it out with the aluminum, but it comes with a carbon fiber. So, it's a clean little car, man. No doubt. You guys need 10 scale bodies? Hit up my dude, David Nugent. Nice 10 scale bodies. He's got lots of them, guys. He's a local California guy. Got a couple bodies here. Of course, the GT1s. But this one's going on there. I'm honestly not sure whether I'm going to speed run it or uh, drag race it, to tell you the truth. I don't know yet. So, like I said, they're clean little cars. It's got aluminum pulleys on it. Um, singing about throwing a CM36 in there. 7700KV. Or the Mamba Monster 1. And uh, send it and see what kind of numbers I can get drag racing. I mean, that wouldn't be a bad combo either for some speed ones. But yeah, it's a new car I just picked up. Super clean, man. I like it. But they're just so smooth. Everything's smooth on them. But... We'll see what we're going to do. I don't know if there's a, a class here for 10 scales or not. Might end up having to send it, speed run it, see what happens. But um, So let me get this out of the way real quick. And then we'll move on to the next thing. Actually, there's a couple things. So, check that out. Know what that is? That's a Sky RC case. Clean, huh? So last week I took my Sky RC out. I had a Velcro on the bottom right here. When I lifted it up, the whole bottom came off. It's literally got a couple glue spots on it. And all the internals, that's the battery right there. All the internals fall out of it. So, I put my boy to work. He's a little genius when it comes to this stuff, man. But I put him to work, and he came up with this case. And I like it, because now we can Velcro this to the body or strap it, whatever you're going to do, glue it. You can even put some shoe glue on it. You can still see all your lights. We took it out today and tested it. And that's thick, man. It's solid. It's very thick and solid. Um, took it out today and tested it. I drove down the street in the car. Came back and it works through here. So it's good stuff. I think maybe the antenna's through here or something. I don't know. But Sky RC cases. Oh, and it's got the port so you can charge it right inside there if you want. But there you go, guys. Hit me up if you're interested. These new Sky RC uh, performance am analyzers are pretty sick. Really. But let me know. I'm going to have them in all different colors too. Because I know some speedrunners back in the day were uh, painting all their stuff orange, green, pink. So that way they can see it if it got lost. So we'll, we'll have some different color cases. Alright guys. So here's an XLX. Let me show you what I do. 8 millimeter bullet, 8 millimeter bullet. I got about inch and a half, two inches of wire on there. All right, stick them on the other side. You're going to tin the wire. Get it ready. On an XLX, this is how I do it. You guys might have other ways of doing it, or you know someone that does it different, and that's fine. This is my way. 
Cat Pack should always be as close as possible to the ESE. Yes, but not it don't have to be on there. My wires, uh, when I cut my wires for my cat packs, I give seven inches of wire. And the reason I do that, if you want to shorten them, shorten them. If you need them long for some reason, then run them long. When I say seven inches of wire, that's from the back to the front, not seven inches off here because I think that's way too much. So you want as close as you can to the ESC. What's a better spot than right here by Castle's Caps? Now, saying that, all my XLXs, I take them off. There's no need for them. You can take them right off. You heat up this area right here, they'll fall off. Or you can just cut this board off. Um, you have a good quality cap pack, you don't need them, and you'll still see low ripple. So like I said, take them off. This video though, I'm just gonna show you how to put the cap pack. So I take my little razor blade, cheap 99 cent razor blade, you're going to cut some of this plastic right here. Look at that. Already done. So we're going to take this little plastic piece. We're going to trash that. Now what do you have? You have your solder joint showing. Right here and right here. Plastic is still around there. Holding everything together. That's basically what it's doing. It's holding all these caps and stuff together. So you got your solder spots. I know some guys were talking about cutting right here. There's no need to do that. This wire. If you grab a hold of it. You can pull it back. Okay, you can expose it and see the other side's not pulled back. It's just shrunk in there. So you expose your wire. Both sides. So that way you don't have to cut it. Now after you're done, you can pull your wire back down and get it back down closer. So it looks clean. Alright, so what I do, like I said, I pre tin these. Now I'm going to go ahead and pre tin those. Let me clean off my soldering iron. Let it sit here for a minute getting hot. Get my chair out. So I'm going to tin that. Put a little too much on there. I'm going to put that on here. Wait for it to get hot. Your soldering iron might take longer. Um, I got a Heiko 900 degree soldering iron, so let it get nice and hot so it soaks into that wire, soaks into this solder right here, because this solder goes straight through. These are actually two pieces of wire, I believe, guys. That's a lot right there, but I'll get it up. Just changed the tip out on the soldering iron for some reason. It's not melting. What's going on here? Oh damn, it's turned off. Hold on. Alright, it should heat up in no time, guys. Anyways, so I'm going to take this bullet right here. And I'm going to put it on here. Red to red. That's how I do it. Your guys' bullets might be different. Grab some tweezers. Hold it together. Let me get this hot again. My soldering iron is just not hot enough right now for some reason. Let me see what's going on with this damn thing. All right, it's starting to get warm now. I'm gonna put them underneath both wires. That way they get hot enough to melt them together, which it's not doing at all. I'm gonna change out this tip. Get this tip. Give me one second, guys. All right, guys. I think I got the soldering iron heated up. So I went ahead and just soldered on the red bullet I'm gonna solder on the black one usually I'll go to the top but I decided to go off to the side I think it looks cleaner that way that way afterwards take my cap back I just plug it right in if you're switching cars for speed runs to drag you can swap out packs if you want um, if you want to try different brands do one run with mine and another run with someone else's 
to see if you're gaining or whatever, you can just swap it out that way. Um, I feel there's just enough resistance this way that it works out really good. Uh, you guys have all seen my data. If you haven't, then you're sleeping under a rock. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's how I do it, man. And then I'll take some uh, heat shrink. Let's see if I can find some. I'll get some heat shrink, throw it around there. It'll look clean. You won't ever uh, won't see nothing gr gross or nasty. And it's right there by the solder or by the joint, Castle's joint. So no pointy areas, nice and smooth. No cold joints. If it looks foggy, guys, get a different kind of solder. You shouldn't want your solder should never be foggy looking. If you look at Castle's, it's shiny. Um, that means they're using a good solder. Now I know they use a lead free and that's for safety. My solder, um, I use a leaded solder. Let's see if I can find it. I've cut a bunch of strips for this, but, um, you can get burns matic electrical or a Kester. That's what I'm actually running right now. Uh, 60, 40 blend and it works really good. Let's see if this thing's totally heated up now, and we'll go ahead and try to put this one on. Let's just show you. All right, I tinned my soldering iron. I'm going to get that solder nice and hot. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my tweezers here. Don't steal them out of your old lady's drawer. She'll kill you, man. That's actually where these ones came from. And then I ended up getting to keep them, but... You're just going to solder the two halves together, get it nice and hot to where they're going to mix, and you'll feel the tweezers getting soft. You don't want to do too much heat next to the XLX, but I don't know what's going on with my soldering iron today. It's never acted up, ever, in the year that I've had it. I bought a ProTech off a guy on uh, Facebook. The thing's loud and noisy and don't have time and don't work. I'm not going to throw a dude under the bus, but. Alright, there you go. It's starting to melt now. You can see it melting. I left my tweezers off though, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it here into place. Alright, so basically, you're going to melt it right into castle's joint right there boom nice and clean shiny there you go that's how i do mine let me check the other side and make sure there's no cold joints put a little bit of solder right here you want to make sure it's not a bunch of ferocity. Make sure it's touching. I want good contact, so I'm going to touch the all front side, from back and side to side. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this soldering iron, man. This thing's never giving me problems. Heiko's a really good brand, I feel. Uh, my pops always had one, old school one in the garage, so... He never had problems with his, so that's what I got. But all right, we got a good connection right there, guys. So this is what I'm gonna do now. I'm going to grab a piece of uh, heat shrink. And if you've ever had problems with heat shrink not being the right size, or it's not getting tight enough, get you some uh, needle nose. I got these long ones. Put the heat shrink there stretch it out a little bit it'll stretch all four sides or it'll rip you'll see it starting to rip throw some heat shrink around there the reason i stretched it out is because i want it to be real tight i don't want a loose um, heat shrink on there i don't want it loose but it's got to be big enough to fit around the bullet so i'm gonna heat it up now there you go. Looks clean. 
no metal to touch anywhere plug your cat pack right here you can bend it around this way you can have it coming straight out bend it back however you want but there you go guys that's how i do it you might have another way like i said or someone else is going to do it for you or whatever but I've never had a problem. My ripple's always been real low, and obviously, um, the numbers work. I can show you a little trick for bullets, too. I know a lot of people out there. I did it when I first started out. When you put bullets on, you're using the soldering iron, and kind of a pain. The damn wires get so damn hot. But All right, so there it is. Not only that, if I decide to not run a cap pack, I can now run parallel. I can plug in here and here and just run parallel without a connector and just use castle cap pack, especially drag racing. If you guys want to run a parallel, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, for bullets, let me get, get my jar of bullets out right here. All right, what are these? All right, so I got some cheap bullets right here. All right. Old block of wood. Look at that, all burnt up. Two by four, cut down, real different size for different size bullets. So your bullet will snap, go into one of these, whatever, boom. So you're gonna take a torch, get it hot. You're gonna melt the solder in there afterwards, boom. Make sure it's still hot. That one didn't even get hot. But anyways, you're going to use a torch instead of a soldering iron. You're going to get it real hot. Put some solder up in there. Then you're going to do the same thing to your wire. You're going to touch the tip of your wire because you're uh, the tip of the inside of the water wire. Because the outside will start looking like that if you start getting that on fire. It'll come off, but it looks like it weakens the silicone. And you just dip it in there. Easy no problems so we'll do that next time um but there you go guys xlx wired up for a cap pack like i said you can remove these caps if you want but it looks clean and it's going to work just fine you got your eight millimeter bullets on there uh, that's all i use if i'm going to use eight millimeter or xt 90s whatever you're using on the ends right here i'd use the same thing for your cap pack my cap pack i keep about two 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 and a half inches on there i want it basically what I try to measure is the same length of the wire going to the end of the wire, Castle's wire. See? Real close. Let me get that on the other side. And it's always worked for me. So, like I said, the bullets, you can go ahead and solder straight to here if you want. If you want no bullets on there, cut the bullets off, solder straight to that point. But now you're limited. This, the cat pack's limited where it's going to go. This way I can move it around. I can swap cap packs if I want. I'm constantly checking different caps. I'm checking different things out um, with my caps. Every time I go out, it's like a learning curve. I got boxes, literally. This is no joke. Boxes full of caps that I've tried. So when I go out, I try new things. Should I run seven caps, five caps, three caps? I come back, I read the data, and I said, okay, this is what works. But there you go, guys. XLX, ready to go. And also, it still bends right here. You don't have to worry about hard spots inside. It still bends just fine. You can move your wires wherever you want to go. So there you go. XLX, Sky RC. I'll have these on eBay, guys. Anybody needs them, buy them, whatever. Um, Here's another thing. So the spools. I've had a lot of people ask. Here's the spools I sell. See that little rubber O-ring? You have to have it in between the cup and the bearing. Or else it will hit on the diff carrier. Alright guys. God bless you. Have a good day. Good night. Be safe. With all this virus stuff going on right now. Just try to be safe. Take care of your family. Stay humble. I'm out. God bless.